In this video, I'm going to show you how I complete the first pass on a small painting. This is a 9 by 12 painting, and I've done most of the first pass already, but you can see the orange areas of the hand where the underpainting is still showing. I completed the underpainting prior to doing the first pass, um, so at one point the, the entire painting looked orange, and that was done in Transparent Earth Red by Gamblin. On my palette in the lower half of the screen, you can see all of the colors that I've pre-mixed. The palette is a little bit messy because I've already painted most of the first pass. Throughout the first pass, I'm trying to balance productivity with accuracy. So I don't want to get bogged down by detail and get stuck on one area and not be able to move forward. At the same time, I'd like to be able to get as much done as possible so I'm not leaving too much information for the second pass. It's a balance of detail and efficiency. One of the reasons why I like to move through the first pass at a, a steady pace anyways, and I'm not saying quickly or slowly, but just at a pace that feels like I'm making progress, um, is because it's difficult sometimes to compare the colors that I'm adding when I'm contrasting them or comparing them to the vibrant underpainting. Everything that I add might look quite dull or quite gray. It's not necessarily two dollar gray, it's only in comparison to the vibrant underpainting. Because the color looks quite dull or gray next to the underpainting, it can make me second guess the colors sometimes and try to compensate for that and make them more vibrant. But I want to refrain from doing that. Um, and just trust the colors that I've mixed because I have done careful work of pre-mixing colors, um, comparing them to my photo reference in order to be able to trust them and to know that they're accurate. Once the underpainting is completely covered and the first pass is done, then I can reassess the color relationships and see if there's anything that needs a little bit more work or that I haven't done quite accurately. I only include as much detail as I can feasibly accomplish without making the painting too muddy or losing some of the colors um, in this first pass. Generally, if there are any areas that I want to make more detailed and I haven't been able to do that in the first pass, I'll just leave it for the second pass. You can see as I do this, I pick from my pre-mixed colors, but sometimes I will adjust those colors, um, either by mixing the pre-mixed colors together or by adding some of the, the pigments that are straight from the tube um, lined up at the top of my palette. I'll add some of those into the pre-mixed colors. While I do try to mix a good variety of pre-mixed colors, it's not necessarily representative of all the subtleties of colors that I'll need and that would just be too time consuming and unnecessary to do. Um, so I, I pick a selection and then I adjust them as I go for those more subtle variations. Now the colors that I mix in advance are all based on the individual painting or reference that I'm working from. It's not a, a set sort of standard of colors that I mix for every painting. Um, it's very much dependent on my reference and on my subject matter.
Typically I'll try to use the biggest brush I can for a given area. That doesn't mean that it's always a big brush. Some areas might require smaller brushes in order to really in order to add the colors that are, are necessary for that area and not get too clumsy with it. If I find that I have to turn the brush on its side or just use the tip of it, then usually that means the brush is too big. But if I'm doing too many brush strokes for one area and I could accomplish it in just one or two, I'm using a brush that's too small. So I think a good guideline is to use the biggest brush you can for the area that you're working on. It should feel efficient, but not too clumsy. In order to keep my colors clear, I try to avoid going back into already painted areas when the paint is still wet. Sometimes I'll need to do that in order to soften off an edge or to correct a color mistake, um, but for the most part I try to keep it fairly, fairly I guess, separate. Um, so I'm painting only over the dry areas and trying not to go back into those wet areas. Um, too many brush strokes into wet paint will muddy the color and flatten the values. And I've done a lot of work to mix those colors in the first place, so I don't want to blend them all together and make a muddy, muddy color mess. I hope you found this helpful. Thank you for watching.